Hello, my name is Carly McAvoy, and today we're doing problem solving with linear equations. First, we're just going to translate and then solve, and then we'll do a couple of word problems that are a little more complicated. This says the sum of triple a number and 6 is equal to 21. Well, what does triple a number look like? Triple a number looks like 3n or 3x or something like that. And 6, that's just addition is equal to, there's our is equal to sign 21. So there's our equation, the sum of, it's a sum, so it's addition, triple a number and six. Triple a number is not this, right? Sometimes people think, oh, triple a number to the third power. Think about if you made $10 an hour at your job and they told you, we're going to pay you triple time if you come in on Sunday you know that what you would get would be 3 times 10 or $30 an hour for triple time. If you made N $10 and it was to the third power, that would be $1,000 an hour. And there's no way triple means take something to the third power. Okay, let's get the N by itself by subtracting 6 from both sides. Then we'd have 3N equals 15. And then all we have to do is subtract not subtract, get rid of that coefficient 3 by dividing both sides by 3 and n equals 5. Now be careful because a lot of times when you're working on the computerized program it asks you to do both things, set up the equation and solve it. So your first answer is the equation and the second one is the number as you solve it. Okay, um, do you see right here where this one says twice a number plus 6 is equal to 3 times the number minus 8 is equal to? That's our equal sign. Everything to the left of that is on the left of our equal sign. Everything to the right is on the right. So what's on the left? Twice a number plus 6. Just like triple a number, twice a number is 2 times that. So I'm going to say that that's 2x plus 6 is equal to 3 times the number minus 8. We're talking about the number, so it's the same number. 3 times that number minus 8. There's my equation. Twice a number plus 6 is equal to 3 times the number minus 8. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. 2x minus 3x is negative x. Remember, solving equations is not the real issue here, so you can go back and practice that if you don't know how to solve it. It's really getting these set up that we're working on in this video. Subtract 6 from both sides. You have negative x is negative 14. We cannot leave a coefficient of negative 1. You can multiply or divide by negative 1 here. And when you do, the two negatives make a positive x, and negative 14 times negative 1 gives you 14. All right, let's look at the next one. A tree stump is cut into three pieces. The first piece is three times the length of the second piece. The third piece is two more than twice the second piece. Find the length of the three pieces. When you're doing a word problem, the first thing you want to do is read it and make sure you understand what's happening. And the second thing you want to do is start to describe by using variables or pictures, describe the situation. So let's say that this is my tree stump. Here it is. Okay. Now, I'm cutting it up into three pieces. The first piece is three times the length of the second piece, so it's way longer, and the se first second piece is pretty short. And the third piece is two more than twice the second piece. So maybe I didn't draw that to scale very well because this has got to be three times as long. So if I call my second piece, see how everything is based on the second piece? I'm going to call my second piece X. How would you describe the first piece? Maybe the first piece is on this side. The first piece is three times as long. So three times X. What's the last piece? Well, the third piece is two more than twice X. What does two more than twice x look like? It looks like twice x plus two. So now I can say I understand what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the length of the three pieces. I only want to use one variable because I just want to solve an equation with one variable. 
Well, what's the equation that I need to set up? Do you agree that the length of the three pieces makes up um, the entire piece? Well, I didn't say how long the um, whole thing was altogether. So there's no way to solve this without telling you the length of the three pieces. So let's say it's altogether 52 feet. All right, how long is each piece? We have to know that piece for that to work. Okay, so now we'd say 3x plus x plus 2x plus 2, I'm going to call that 62, equals 62. 3x plus x plus 2x plus 2. In order to do this problem, I need to know the total length of the tree or else I couldn't do it. I, because I'm doing the video, got to randomly make up a link. You would not be able to do that. You would not have enough information to solve this problem, but you would have had enough information to set up your three stump pieces. Okay, let's finish this. I have three plus one plus two. That's three, four, five, six X's. And then I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. When you subtract 2 from both sides, that gets your 6x by itself equals 60. And I did that 62 choice so that I would get a nice answer. 60 divided by 6 is 10. Now, find the length of the three pieces. Well, the first, second piece, that's just 10 because we said x is 10. What's the length of this piece? Well, it's 3 times 10 because it's 3 x's. So that piece is 30. And what's the length of this piece? 2 times 10 is 20, plus 2 more is 22. In all, those three pieces added together should equal 62. Does 30 plus 10 plus 22 equal 62? It does. So there's my three pieces of the log. Let's see if I did a better job at writing this. And the sad thing is I just copied them out of a book. I just left a piece out, apparently. According to the, the Cron, welders make an average of $14,990 less per year than electricians. If the combined average salaries of welders and electricians are $90,830, what's the average salary for each? I did a little better on this one because I did tell you what the total was combined. Okay, So what I want to do is find out two things. I want to find out the average salary for a welder and the average salary for an electrician. I don't want to use two different variables, but I do know this, that um, the average salary for a welder plus the average salary for an electrician equals $90,830. Do you agree with that? If we could figure out the average salaries for those two things, those two people or groups of people, we would have a total added together of $90,830. So the welder's income is based on an electrician. So I'm going to say E equals the average salary for an electrician. So over here, instead of average salary for electrician, I'm replacing that with E. Because I have a better way to write that rather than have to write out the English words. Okay. Then I'm going to say... I don't want to use a new variable here, but I do want to describe the average salary for welders. Well, welders make $14,990 less than electricians. So I can take the electrician's pay. Would I be adding $14,990 or subtracting $14,990? Well, they're making less. Since they're making less, we're going to subtract 14,990 from that average pay for electricians. Average salary for a welder then 
is E minus 14,990. And that's the equation I want to solve. If I add together the E and the E, I get 2E I did get this information off the internet and wrote this problem, and so I know that's accurate. If I add 14,990, I have 2e left over here. And what do I have over here? I don't know. Let's do this. Um, 90,830 plus 14,990 is 1,30. 5,820 and now I want to get that E by itself so I'm going to divide both sides by 2 and when I divide by 2 I get 52,910 so E is 52,910 what does that mean? well that means what the average electrician makes. How do I figure out what the average welder? We didn't call it W, we called it E minus 14,990. So if I take the value that I had for my electrician and I subtract 14,990, I get 37,920. And this is the average salary for an electrician and this is the average salary for a welder. That's average, so those can vary greatly and of course they do. Okay, a little different type of problem. If Alex is paying $32 per day and 34 cents per mile, how far can he drive if he has the car for five days but only has $296 to spend on the rental car? Okay. We're going to forget about taxes and all those weird little fees for the GPS and the car seat and all that. We're just talking about what we have here, $32 a day and $0.34 cents per mile. Do you see that I'm going to call D, uh, we know the days actually, um, I don't, don't want to say it D, I'm going to call it M equals number of miles. How far can you drive? That's what we're interested in. First of all, let's figure out what it cost him to have the car for five days. Well, it's costing $32 per day, and he has that car for five days. So it looks like $160 just to have the car, even if you decided not to drive it. You just wanted a cool car sitting out in front of your house to impress people. So you'd have $160, plus you're going to be charged $0.34 cents for every mile that you drive. So $160 is the cost of having the car plus 34 cents for every mile. But he um, or she, Alex, I don't know, um, maybe it's he, he is only spending $296 on a car rental. So then we have to say how far could he actually drive before he goes over his budget. We're going to subtract 160 from both sides. That's 34.34M left. And over here we have 63136. And then we're going to divide both sides by 0.34. Remember, if you have a decimal, you need to divide by exactly what you have. I don't know what that is. 136 divided by 0.34 or 34 hundredths is 400. How nice that came out. So Alex can drive 400 miles in five days if his budget is $296. Some important things to remember about word problems. Read them thoroughly and understand them. Make sure you have all the information that you need to solve. Describe or, uh, your variables either by a picture or by writing them out as algebraic expressions and then set your equation up to solve. Alright, have a fantastic day.